Looks like I got too comfortable. Got this email from GitHub. Your free GitHub Copilot preview is ending soon. It's been a fun journey, but we're coming to the end of your trial period. <sighs> It has been a fun journey. You know, over the last year or so that I've been using Copa, not year, it's been it's been a year since I've been in the beta program or the preview program or the trial, whatever they call it, but I didn't know about it until a few months ago. Ever since I found out about it and signed up for it and started using it, I still am blown away every time I use it. I open up a project that I don't even expect to be using it on and it starts helping me right away. Not to mention trying out new languages that I've never tried before, like I, I did Rust. I made a video about that. I, started learning Rust. It helped me the first time I ever tried using Rust. Copilot was right there. And it's not even the big chunks of code that it's most useful for. It is useful for writing big chunks of code, don't get me wrong, but that code is your responsibility in the end, right? You have to make sure that whatever Copilot wrote is valid code, that it runs, it doesn't crash your stuff. Always make sure that that's what's happening, but that's not why I love Copilot. I love Copilot for the mundane shit. Let's say I have, uh, I don't know, an array of parameters. You know what, let's see if I can find an example of this. Here's one, this uh, params file. Okay, so let's say I type somebody else, like, I don't know, Joe, right? Look at this. This is coming from Copilot right here. Yeah, I know I can copy and paste a line, but this is an example of how awesome this thing can really B and how it can really speed you up. Oh, look at this. So it detected that I have a few of these, like Gandhi and Gandhi Alt, Lincoln, Lincoln Alt, and the last one is Alex, and it's recommending Alex Alt. So yeah, I might have an Alex Alt there, and if I were to try and type that out, it would help me. So that's one example where it's really nice. Here's a, a configuration Python script, and this one has a ton of parameters. So this is a pain writing this out. This is a class, you got the parameters going into the class, and then you're setting local variables, right? So let's see if I start typing something here. New param, okay? What's it gonna do here? Self.newparam equals new param. All I gotta press is tab here instead of having to type that whole thing out. What if I go and create the new uh, param local variable? Is it gonna know that I wanna do that? No, because it's later in the file. Yeah, but it knows I wanna create a string once I start typing it. That's pretty sweet. Uh, what else is here? Here's another example of the config here. Uh, let's say I have new param down here and it's a string. By the way, does anybody else do typing? in uh, Python like I do. I like types and Python has them, so why the heck not use them? So I created a new local variable this time, a new field, and now I go to the uh, constructor. There it is. It knows that that's what I want, right? Now let's see, where else can I do this? So down here, new line and self.newparam equals new param. All that work is saved. And it's just like, I had to hit a couple of keys and that's it. The speed that that gains you is just, I can't put a price on that. So they're charging, what are they charging here? By the way, this is not sponsored or anything. I'm not being paid by GitHub or Microsoft or Copilot. This is just something that I feel is very valuable. This is one of those tools that's life-changing for a software developer. So right now, uh, let's see, they went to a 60 day trial to evaluate Copilot. And after that, they're gonna start charging $10 per month. Or if you choose yearly billing, it's $100 per year. There's a ton of subscriptions we have to pay for nowadays and things add up. But this, if you're using this for work, if you're using Copilot to do your job as a software developer, for me at least, it's worth the money. So yeah, I'm gonna be paying for this. Now it looks like if you're a student, you might be able to apply for some kind of discount here. So check out the documentation for their pricing page to see if you qualify for that. Now, just a couple of days ago, um, a client of mine from a few years ago reached out and says that he needs some help fixing up his app. The TypeScript declarations are not working anymore. Typical, right? TypeScript gets updated and some things break. It happens. So what do I do? Well, I offer to help and it's an old code base that I haven't looked at for years. To figure everything out, to figure where all the types are, it would probably take me a few hours to do that. Maybe not a few hours, maybe a, a couple hours. So here's an example of that right here. I undid the changes and look at this. This is a TypeScript error, right? Spread types may only be created from object types. Well, as typical TypeScript errors go, it doesn't really tell me much. <laughs> sometimes they're helpful, but sometimes they're not. So how do you fix this problem? Well, 
I went up here and I started typing this again. Uh, actually, storage service. I'm not even familiar with what this does anymore. I'm kind of vaguely familiar, but look at this. Basically, based on my code here, it figured out what I need to do. So I'm just gonna press tab here. Look at that. It inserted the type, the generic type for that get item call. And there we go. Problem fixed. All I did was press a couple of tabs. I've fixed the project. There was a couple of other places where this needs to be fixed. I did all those and now I've saved my client potentially a bunch of money from having to pay me. Did Copilot just take my money? No, because now the client is happy and the client will come back to me for more work if more features need to be developed. So everybody wins. By the way, these types of fixes should not take you a long time to do and these should not lead to you charging your client a lot of money. You want to get past all this little crap so that you can get to the big feature developments and really, really add value to your client instead of doing this kind of stuff. So in this example, Copilot is very beneficial. All right, now I got this email that says, Copilot preview just ended. But why am I not sad? Well, because I found out something else. Look at this. If you're a student or an open source maintainer, GitHub Copilot is free. Huh. So I guess uh, I was sort of right about the discount part for students. It's full discount. It's free. So if I click on this button, look at this. My current monthly bill from GitHub is zero. My current plan is GitHub free. And there's GitHub Copilot. You are eligible to use GitHub Copilot for free. <laughs> this is awesome. And uh, I just found out why. Because I'm a maintainer of these organizations. And one of them is an open source project called NativeScript. I don't contribute much code, but once in a while I do. It's been a while, but <laughs> once in a while I, I do have uh, some commits in here, so they consider that okay. All these awesome people that are working on this open source project and other open source projects out in the open, they probably also get Copilot for free. So would I have paid for Copilot if I didn't have access to it, if I just lost the access? And the answer is yes, I would have paid for it because I find it's super valuable and I constantly use it. It's just another tool in the tool bag now. It's so well integrated into VS Code that I don't even notice sometimes when it's working. Am I happy that I'm gonna not have to pay for it? Yeah, I'm happy about that too. So suddenly my ass was saved because I'm an open source contributor. Find an open source project, contribute to it, and GitHub Copilot will be yours. I don't know how long this will last, but I'll take it. All right, folks, see you in the next video.